to start talking about optimization, let's actually go back and review a bit from before. So let's just take as an example a function. Let me just write it down. So what we want to know with optimization is when a function achieves maximum and minimum values. And for a function like this, a cubic, we kind of know what the answer is, or at least how to start finding uh, the optimal points. Uh, we want to look for the stationary points. So we want to look for where the derivative equals zero. So if we compute the derivative here, that's relatively straightforward. We get this, and in this case, uh, we notice that everything is divisible by three, so that will help with the arithmetic. Um, okay, and so uh, if we set this equal to zero, then we can ignore the coefficient of the 3 because it would just divide out. Oops, 15. Um, okay, and so in this case, uh, we can hopefully factor this. So 15 is, of course, 3 times 5, so this would factor to be x minus 3, x minus 5 equals 0, so x equals 3, or x equals 5. Those are our stationary points. So uh, if we then do the first or second derivative test to understand the behavior of this function, then uh, we, we need to figure out, well, x equals 3 and x equals 5 are stationary points, but do they correspond to maximum points, minimum points? Is one of them one type and the other is the other type? Uh, we're not sure uh, at this moment. So uh, in this case, we have two options. We can do the first derivative test or the second derivative test. Um, I'll do both. So first derivative test. So yeah, I'm going to draw a number line, and I'm going to put 3 and 5 on it uh, because those were my critical points. And I'm going to look at the intervals that those two points define. So they define the intervals negative infinity up to 3, uh, 3 to 5, and finally uh, 5 to infinity. And then I'm going to consider what f prime is doing on each of those intervals. Uh, and in order to do that, I'm going to pick some test numbers. And in this case, I'll pick 2, 4, and 6, um, just because those are um, you know, sort of obvious choices. Uh, actually, 0, 4, and 6 probably would have been more logical. But um, in any case, uh, so if I take 2 and I substitute that into my first derivative expression, then f prime of, say, well, let me just go ahead and do 0 instead, uh, would be plus 15. Now, I don't really care about the value that I get so much here, just whether or not it's positive or negative. So f prime at 0 is positive, which means that um, the function is increasing on uh, this first interval. Okay, and then we'll do likewise for the other two points. So I can't cheat with 4, unfortunately. Um, so I'd get, what, 16 minus 32 plus 15, uh, which is negative 1. So f decreasing on 3 to 5. And then finally, f prime of 6, I would have 36 minus 48 plus 15. Um, that is, let's see, uh, 41. 51 minus 48 is 3. So f is increasing on 5 to infinity. Okay, so because we now know that f changes from increasing to decreasing, so if we kind of uh, draw a second number line here, um, so we've got 3, we've got 5, then f is going up 
on this part, down here, and up there. So, 3 comma f of 3 should be a uh, local max, so call, uh, whereas 5 comma f of 5 is a local min uh, because we shifted from decreasing to being increasing. Uh, okay, now, so that was the first derivative test option. Um, so the second derivative test, um, we'll need, I need a little bit more space here. So uh, first off, let's just remind ourselves that the first derivative was x squared, um, well, it was actually three times this, so let's just uh, put that back, uh, minus, um, sorry, um, minus 8x, uh, plus 15, um, and again, the 3 I can sort of ignore here just because I don't really care about the values. I, I, what I really care about is the sign. So f double prime of x would be 3 times 2x minus 8, um, and the points of interest are crit, uh, excuse me, are stationary points. Were x equals 3 and 5. Um, so if I compute f double prime of 3, I get 3, 6 minus 8, which is whatever, I don't care, it's negative. And that means that 3 comma f of 3 is a local max. Okay, and the reason that it's max is sort of think of the fact that the second derivative at 3 was negative means that locally the function looks sort of like that, where we just went through a maximum. Uh, and if we compare that to, say, uh, the other point at 5, f double prime of 5 would be 3 times, well, 10 minus 8, which is definitely positive. And so 5 comma f of 5 is a local min. Um, and the picture this time is, well, concave up looks sort of like that. And so what did we just go through? We went through a minimum point. Okay, so hopefully this is a pretty good uh, recap of uh, the optimal uh, values, local maxes and mins that we studied uh, before. Um, but we're going to take this further. So the first way that we're going to take this slightly further is to actually make a slightly new definition. So the reason that we looked for stationary points in the previous example is we needed to know whenever the derivative was zero uh, because candidates for where maximum and minimum points could occur are uh, going to be wherever the derivative is zero. But there's another type of point that we have to be uh, concerned about. We need to look for where f prime of x equals zero or where f prime of x is undefined. So we call these points critical points. So x naught is a critical point of f if f of x naught is defined and either f prime of x naught equals zero or f prime of x naught is undefined. So the reason that we specify that the function f of x naught has to actually be defined is, well, it's not very interesting to consider a point that's not even the, in the domain of a function. So the difference here is our definition thus far of stationary point was whenever the derivative was zero. And we're just adding basically an extra option that it could be the case that you have a stationary point, the derivative zero, everything's just like it was, but we also need to worry about places where the derivative is undefined. So a good example of that would actually be our favorite function, 
f of x equals absolute value x. And if we look at this function, the domain is everything. So uh, it's totally okay to take the absolute value of any number. Uh, but if we sketch the graph, then it would sort of look like that. And the problem point is, of course, the cusp there at the bottom. So um, this function has a critical point at x equals 0 because f prime of 0 is undefined. And we looked at why f prime of 0 was undefined using the limit definition uh, before, but for now we can just uh, use the geometry. Um, another example uh, of where this sort of thing happens is uh, when you have sort of uh, exponents. So for example, if I take f of x is x to the 2 thirds, the domain of this function is also all real numbers. Okay. However, the derivative is 2 thirds x to the minus 1 third, and this is undefined for x equals 0. So even though the original function was defined at x equals 0, its derivative is not defined at x equals 0. So that would make, in this case, 0 a critical point of this function. Um, it's also worth noticing that neither example here have stationary points. Uh, there are no values of x that make the derivative equal to 0 in either of these two examples. That doesn't have to happen in general, but it did here. Um, so just to recap on this part, the new part, is that we need to look at two kinds of points. Points that make the derivative equal to 0, which we looked at quite a bit before, and we still will consider them, uh, such points we called stationary points. But we're going to allow that the derivative could also be undefined at points. And if either is true, so either if the derivative is 0 or if the derivative is undefined, we'll cut such points uh, uh, critical points.